Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless a high stakes speech at the united nations president biden warned world leaders that standing up to russia's invasion of ukraine is vital to world peace the president declared that the united states will continue military and financial support for ukraine yet a recent poll shows more than half of americans think the u.s has done enough the ongoing war in Ukraine took center stage as the main foreign policy issue the president addressed. Russia believes that the world will grow weary and allow it to brutalize Ukraine without consequence. But I ask you this, if we abandon the core principles of the United States to appease an aggressor, can any member state in this body feel confident that they are protected. While the Biden administration's commitment to Ukraine remains steadfast, a recent CNN poll reports 51% of Americans surveyed believe the U.S. has done enough to help Ukraine in the fight against Russia, compared to 48% who want America to do more. Zelensky visits Capitol Hill and the White House this week as the GOP wrestles over a new budget bill, including another $24 billion for Ukraine. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is making no promises. Is Zelensky elected to Congress? Is he our president? I don't think I have to commit anything. I have questions for him. Where's the accountability and the money we already spent? What is the plan for victory? Biden has a sideline meeting planned with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the first since Netanyahu returned to office. According to the White House, the two will discuss countering and deterring Iran, along with other issues focusing on the shared democratic values of the two countries. Well, here's a significant fact that isn't being really reported much, and that is there weren't any other world leaders at Biden's speech. Uh, there were their U.N. representatives, but I think it underlines that the world doesn't think the U.N. has any power and there will be nothing that comes from this speech as we start growing into this multipolar world where you're going to have US, U.S. interests, you're going to have Chinese interests, you're going to have interest in India. Uh, Brazil announced uh, as part of this U.N. gathering that they were now the spokesperson for all of Latin America, for South America. Uh, these are incredible changes. Uh, is Europe fracturing or are they coming together as a result of this war? But if they are, why aren't they sending anybody to hear this speech at the U.N.? Here's something the Secretary General of the U.N. said just yesterday. Uh, and it, so it's, it's no coincidence. He, he's trying to make a statement about where we are in the world today. Our world is becoming unhinged. Geopolitical tensions are rising. Global challenges are mounting, and we seem incapable of coming together to respond. We are inching ever closer to a great fracture in economic and financial systems and trade relations. We should all pay attention to this. This isn't the first time the Secretary General of, of the UN has raised dire warnings. Uh, he's done this in the past, but this time he's making very specific recommendations that we change the UN, we change the Security Council. Uh, we try to do something on a global basis for trade. As a Christian, I look at that kind of statement by a world leader and I, frankly, it gives me a chill. You know, are we inching closer to the people recommending that we scrap all the nation states and come up with some kind of one world government? Well, I know exactly where that's going to lead. The Antichrist will control a one world government as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? As anyone can plainly see, 
The world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. Daniel 9, 26 and 27 And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. Are we seeing any signs of a covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies today? In other news, one of the issues Israel's prime minister will discuss with President Biden is a deal to normalize relations between Saudi Arabia and the Jewish state. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. The nations have been negotiating a potential deal for months. The latest development, the United States is considering signing a defense treaty with the Saudis to help seal the deal. The New York Times reports the deal would mirror agreements the United States has with Asian allies like Japan and South Korea. It reportedly guarantees military support if the U.S. or Saudi Arabia is attacked in the region. The Saudi crown prince has also asked for help in developing a civilian nuclear program. If the deal goes through, Saudi Arabia will, for the first time, recognize Israel as an independent country. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict, and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Joe Biden tells audience at the United Nations that Israel must be divided and given for the creation of a Palestinian state. A groundbreaking effort we announced at the G20 Connect India, to connect India to Europe through the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Israel will spur opportunities and investment across two continents. This is part of our effort to build a more sustainable, integrated Middle East. It demonstrates how Israel's greater normalization and economic connection with its neighbors is delivering positive and practical impacts, even as we continue to work tirelessly to support a just and lasting peace between Isra the Israelis and Palestinians. Two states for two people. Two states for two people. Benjamin Netanyahu tells Joe Biden Palestinians will be part of Saudi deal. Biden reiterates a two-state solution. Today, uh, we're going to discuss some of the hard issues, and that is upholding democratic values that lie at the heart of our partnership, including uh, checks and balances in our systems and preserving a path to a negotiated two-state solution, and preserving a path to a negotiated two-state solution. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. 
You and I, 10 years ago, were talking about uh, normalization with uh, Saudi Arabia. And, uh, and uh, I think we'd look at each other like, who's been drinking what? I think we live at a time of great promise, but also grave danger. You uh, spoke about an economic corridor that would link uh, Asia, the Middle East, and Europe together. And such a corridor will, uh, uh, will make Israel a very important hub on a, on a highway of unprecedented prosperity. Uh, but I think, and you think, that it can do something much bigger than that. I think that uh, under your leadership, Mr. President, we can forge a historic peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And I think such a peace would go a long way first to uh, advance the end of the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, achieve reconciliation between the Islamic world and the Jewish state, and advance a genuine peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Uh, this is uh, something within our reach. Uh, I, uh, I, I believe that uh, working together we can make history and create a better future for the region and beyond. On May 14, 1948, a major Bible prophecy was fulfilled concerning Israel, as we read in Isaiah 66, 8. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. On the evening of May 14, 1948, at precisely 4 p.m., the members of the People's Council in Israel signed the proclamation and the declaration was made that the state of Israel is established. This meeting is adjourned. Israel not only became a nation, but also was literally brought forth as a nation in one day, just as the prophet Isaiah foretold. God has set aside a seven-year period, known as the time of Jacob's trouble, or the seven-year tribulation, to save a remnant of Jews. The prophecies of both Jeremiah and Daniel are crucial in unlocking the mysteries of the book of Revelation. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. Jeremiah's prophecy concerns the nation of Israel and is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble, as we read in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The prophet Daniel found himself and his people the Jews in Babylonian captivity. God allowed the nation of Israel to be taken captive for their unfaithfulness. One day, while reading through the scrolls of the prophet Jeremiah, Daniel had an amazing discovery, as we read in Daniel 9, 1-3. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. As it turns out, Jeremiah had already prophesied that this would take place for a seventy-year period. Daniel was so moved and shaken by his discovery that he immediately set out to seek the Lord his God and plead for mercy on Israel and the Jewish people. In the midst of his amazing prayer, the prophet Daniel was given a vision of the end times told to him by the angel Gabriel concerning the Jewish people. Daniel 9:24 through 27 Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Weeks is the Hebrew word Shabua, which means, literally, seven a week, specifically of years. What Daniel's prophecy is saying is there are 70 sevens of years. There is one seven year period for each week. When you take 70 weeks times seven, you get 490 years. You can translate Daniel 9.24 like this. 490 years are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. The prophecy begins by stating that six things will be accomplished regarding the Jewish people during a period of 490 years. Number 1. To finish the transgression, 
which refers to the rejection of Jesus as their Messiah. Number two, to make an end of sins. This period will also witness an end of sin for the Jews. Number three, to make reconciliation for iniquity. The third thing that will happen is the Jews will accept Jesus as their Messiah. Number four, to bring in everlasting righteousness. This will happen when Jesus establishes his earthly kingdom. Number five, to seal up vision and prophecy. The fifth achievement will be the fulfillment of all prophecy concerning the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Number six, and to anoint the most holy. The final goal to be achieved at the end of the 70 weeks of years is the anointing of the Messiah as King of Kings. None of the things listed in verse 24 have found fulfillment in this prophecy concerning the Jewish people. Daniel's prophecy continues in verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. The first part of verse 25 was fulfilled when the Persian king, Artaxerxes, issued a decree to restore and build Jerusalem on March 14, 445 BC. The second part of verse 25, until Messiah the Prince, was fulfilled when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on April 6, 32 AD. From the time King Artaxerxes made the decree to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince was seven weeks and 62 weeks, which equals 69 weeks or 483 years. Verse 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Verse 26 was fulfilled when Jesus was crucified on the cross, and the Romans in 70 AD destroyed the second temple that was prophesied to be built in verse 25, after Christ presented himself to Israel as their Messiah on Palm Sunday and was subsequently cut off. A nearly 2,000 year gap ensued. When Christ was cut off, the time clock for the Jewish nation of Israel was put on pause and the church age began. Then, on May 14, 1948, Israel was once again back in the land fulfilling Isaiah 66 8, essentially turning off the pause button. That was significant because Israel had to be back in the land before the prophecy in Daniel 9:24 through 27 could be fulfilled. God had dealt with Israel as a nation up till the time when Messiah was cut off. He does so again when he resumes his plan with Israel for the 70th week, the final seven years, as we read in verse 27. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. The Apostle Paul tells us what this abomination shall be one who makes desolate is in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who, speaking of the Antichrist, opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Jesus further expounded on what this abomination shall be one who makes desolate is in Matthew 24, 15 through 18. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Scripture plainly tells us that when the Antichrist steps into the soon-to-be-rebuilt third temple and proclaims to be God and demands to be worshipped as God, that the Jewish people are to flee to the mountains and to do so in a hurry. With world conditions rapidly building to a point of readiness for the events of the 70th week of Daniel, the church more than ever needs to get its spiritual house in order. Today, more than at any time in the last 2,000 years, the church can well expect the fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week prophecy and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, 
in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.